Um, Tamara, there was uh, lots, uh, of course, in that uh, announcement there from, from Keir Sum. Why don't we start with that headline? It stemmed from uh, a question you were asking him about and, and that balance between preparing for the future and the green energy transition, but also not, uh, I guess, turning off the taps too quickly, not just on fossil fuels for the whole nation, but for uh, industry and jobs in Scotland in particular. Right, winning seats here in Scotland where Labour were wiped out a decade ago couldn't be more crucial to Labour's plan for an election victory. They have to pick up swathes of seats currently held by the SNP. And they've set up quite a crucial dividing line in the election, which is to set up a publicly owned energy company called Great British Energy, suggesting that the way the private uh, energy companies um, have operated over the last few years, when, of course, bills have gone up a huge amount, uh, due to the war in Ukraine. Shareholders have made large profits. They say that that has failed people and the way to bring bills down is to use our own homegrown energy and to invest in it across the country. They say this will be set up within months and will be headquartered here in Scotland. But one of Labour's big pledges in this campaign is that all of our electricity, 100% of it, would come from green sources by 2030. So that would be an enormous expansion across the UK of offshore and onshore wind, solar, hydrogen and new technologies uh, which haven't even been used yet. And to get there, they say they would ban all new oil and gas drilling licences in the North Sea. The existing ones could continue, but they would want uh, to invest uh, mostly in green energy. Now, I said to Keir Starmer, that it's not just Labour's political opponents who were saying, hang on, what about the tens of thousands of jobs in those oil and gas companies? It's also the trade unions that support Labour who say this is a ban without a plan. And this is what he told me. I've been very, very clear when it comes to the transition that we're not turning off the taps. Oil and gas will be part of the mix for many years um, we're not revoking any licences, but a transition is coming. And when Ed and I went to Aberdeen with Anas just a few months ago to talk to the workforce, of course, to talk to the unions, to talk to the energy sector, um, everybody knows the transition is coming. Everybody's working towards that transition. The investment is already beginning in that transition. Thought is being given about that carbon capture and how the same skills and pipelines could be used. The worst thing we could do now is do what Rishi Sunak is doing and put our head in the sand. So this is a really key dividing line, particularly uh, for voters in Scotland. Keir Starmer still being asked questions about uh, the party's treatment of Diane Abbott, though, because the Labour leader in Scotland, Anna Sawa, who appeared with him here, uh, said this morning that he thought Diane Abbott should be allowed to stand as a candidate. That's the same position as the deputy leader, Angela Rayner, but it's not the position of Keir Starmer, who said it is up to Labour's national executive to make that decision. So that row continues to rumble on. What do you make tomorrow of the fact that uh, Anna Sawa was on, on stage with him? I mean, some people drawing the con comparison to yesterday in Wales where uh, the Welsh First Minister wasn't. Uh, anything to draw from that or is it a sort of sign of the relative strengths of the individuals in, in, the, in the respective countries? It's good Kremlinology there, Wolf. Um, yes, he did not appear on stage with, with Vaughan Gething in Wales, who is facing a no-confidence vote um, by uh, his colleagues in the Senate and by his opposition parties in the Senate, I should say, um, and maybe in, in real trouble. He did appear with Anna Sawa, not, though, on the same stage as Angela Rayner, the deputy leader, who, who appeared just before him. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, Keir Starmer and Anna Sawa, although saying different things about Diane Abbott, uh, this morning are very much on the same page that if they don't win swathes of seats in Scotland, we're talking about between 20 and 30 seats out of 57 uh, in Scotland, they are not going to get the keys to Downing Street and they know that it will be the two of them making those arguments in this election cam campaign which is going uh, to be crucial. There's always a slightly different message in Scotland than in England and in fact got the two little Labour pledge cards for Scotland uh, and Wales and they are slightly different because of course uh, some of the responsibilities are for the Scottish Government so there's nothing about teachers uh, on there for example but uh, them working together um, even though Anna Sawa uh, cannot have, have a go at becoming First Minister uh, for a couple of years to come is going to, be, is going to be crucial here and I think that was a sign of that.
Tomorrow, as always, thanks so much. Tomorrow, Cohen there on the campaign trail with Labour.